Hi, my name's Christine Lavelle and I'm here at Rittle University College and our task for today is to cut the hedge behind us. In fact, we've got two hedges. We've got the green hedge that you can see, which is Buxus sempervirens, a small leafed hedge, which we're going to cut with hedging shears. And then we've got a smaller hedge just in front here, which is not commonly used as a hedging plant, but it's Euonymus fortunii. And so we're going to give that a bit of a hair trim as well. So I'm just going to take you through the tools we need and then we're going to get started. It's a great day for it. Now for cutting a small leaf hedging plant like Buxus sempervirens, it's always a really good idea to use hedging shears. Now the reason for this I was explained to when I had my first job after I left college, which was at Levens Hall Topri Gardens in Cumbria. And the head gardener Chris Crowder said, that if you use hedge trimmers, which have got a reciprocating blade, that's where the blades basically mash up the tissue, um, it bruises the small leaves and it, it really shows afterwards. The leaves start to go brown and, and discolour and your ornamental hedge starts looking less aesthetically pleasing. So this is why cutting with uh, with the hedging shears which has got two blades it cuts in a scissor like action it cuts cleanly through the leaf not causing the bruising and the damage that a hedging pair of hedging shears um, or to, a petrol or an electric one would do okay so this is your hand shears this one here and we're going to get going now if you haven't cut your hedge since last year you've probably got your hedging shears out the shed just like I did today and what a mess they were so I took them up to our glass house at Russell University College and I gave them a good cleaning and if you would like to see how that's done I've, I've put that together on a separate video so please have a look at that before you get started but we're going to get started here on our hedge and I'll take you through the steps that I was taught uh, when I trained with the National Trust and also uh, when I was at Levens Hall Topri Gardens where we just had miles of the stuff. Okay. Now it really is imperative that you've got good clean sharp tools in which to use otherwise it doesn't make as good a job on your hedge and the job takes far longer. Depends on who you've trained with and how you were trained, if you cut the top first or the sides first, I prefer to cut the sides first and then do the top last. When we did miles of this box hedging at Levens Hall, we used to get in the inside first of all and then lean over to do uh, the facing side first. Now, you can see with the hedging shears I've turned them round this way, I find it much better than having to, you've got to do more of a lean if you put them the right way around. So I put them back to front and then I lean over. Now what you're trying to aim for in the hedge is that when you've got a hedge, let's put these down a minute, uh, you don't want your hedge to be straight, you don't want your hedge to be top heavy, which it is, you see up here, it's really quite heavy at the top here. And that stops any light getting down to the, to the bottom of the hedge. And so that's, why you tend to have sometimes bare hedges because there's not enough light to grow the leaves at the base. So you're really aiming to get this lovely A-shaped in. Right, so I'm going to take my hedge and shears and I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to cut it at the top. Now I did this instinctively, but I went for the fattest bit first and then tried to move it in to see where I can get a line in here. You wouldn't go for any start um, pruning here where you've got a big indent in there. So I went for the fattest bit and then I'm going to get a line in and then work my way along. Trying to achieve that A, that a shape.
Well, I've cut both sides now, so the only bit that's left to do is the top. So with the top, like the side, I will look for an area that tends to be a little bit higher than the rest and then work my level out from that. So I'm just going to go and have a look to see. Round about here is quite high, so I'm just going to start cutting. See how much I can take off from this. Down here that looks good so I'm going to take my level from this higher bit and then I'm going to put my shears flat on the hedge when I get to a new bit brush off any leaves then work it my way round on that level and then just continue on down. Now this bit isn't going to be completely level because it's on a slight slope. The gradient goes up slightly from the front uh, to the back, so it will be on a, um, a slight undulating uh, line. to finishing the hedge. We've done both sides, we've done the top, we've still got to finish it uh, a little bit down the bottom but when I do get to the bottom I will go and collect the box clippings and I will take them up to the compost heap. I will turn over the soil and I will apply a fertiliser. Now many people forget to apply fertilisers to hedges but actually hedges probably need fertiliser more than some other plants, say for, for instance in a shrubbery or a herbaceous border, because these are a number of plants put very closely next to each other, so there's a lot of competition here for the uh, nutrients within the soil and then the water within the soil as well, so they need a bit of extra help. People tend to neglect the hedges, they just see them like a barrier, like a fence or a wall, but actually they're living plants and you need to make sure that you look after them very well. So fertilising them after and then irrigating them in the summer if we get into a drought situation which we have done over the last couple of years. So anyway, this is Christine Lavelle signing out. I'm going to finish the hedge so you can see a bit more of that. But that's me for today. Thank you for listening. finished it's 
pretty good, pretty good the top. You can see where it bulges out just a little bit, maybe halfway down, uh, just a little bit less than halfway down on the right hand side. I'd probably go back and have a little bit of a chop at that. There's a bit of a kink where it starts at the top here um, and then works its way down to the bottom. So over the next couple of years I could work on that to try and um, get that looking a little bit straighter. But anyway, that'll do for now. I think I'll just go down and have a, a little uh, chop and walk down both sides after it's finished. Oh. So that's our hedge nearly finished now in terms of cutting it. It has got a bit of a bulge uh, nearly halfway down on the right hand side. I'm going to have a, a little bit of a, a go at that with the shears just to try and straighten that up but you'll never get it completely straight. And then just at this bit here nearest the camera uh, it, there's a slight kink in it that if I was going to be doing the same hedge over another couple of years I'd be working a little bit harder uh, just to make sure I can get it straighter. And just to show you, this is this is uh, with the camera. Oops, this is the after, and we've still got to do this side here. So this is what it looked like more or less before. So this is Buxus Sempervirens here at Rittle University College campus, and that's Christine Lavelle signing out from our hedge cutting duties today. Thank you for listening, and remember. If you haven't got your shears sharpened, there's another video in that too. Okay, bye.